Shattered Lalans Advent Calendar Vlogs, where every day of December we'll be showing you how we prepare for Christmas here at the Chateau. Yep, we've got loads of tricks and tips for you, and if you don't want to miss a thing, hit subscribe, click the notification button, and you'll not miss anything. Here's today's video. The time has come for me to decorate the table for Christmas. I always do it a couple of days in advance because then I know it's done. That's one last thing to think about on Christmas day, but I have to show you the mess that I'm about to have to deal with. There's been a Christmas explosion. How am I gonna make this nice? Okay, time to do the dining room table. <laughs> this is horrible. Stephanie. I don't know what you're talking about. We're nearly finished. <laughs> Okay, couple of name tags and we're done. No, come on, we can do this. Okay. We are going to be the magic Christmas team for the dining room. We should put some Christmas music on. We certainly need some magic. We need to blitz this. Where do we start? Tablecloth. <laughs> Let's start at the very beginning. Ah, that's terrible. You know these are poisonous, right? I did not know that. Okay, Ashley. What it's telling me here on the internet is while poinsettias are commonly hyped as poisonous plants, they rarely are and the poisoning is greatly exaggerated and when ingested there's just mild signs of vomiting, drooling or diarrhoea. All of which will be fine on Christmas Day, so what are we worried about? <laughs> What's happening in here? <laughs> Morning! Can you tell? This is my flowers room in the chateau. I'm ironing the tablecloth. One ironed tablecloth. Okay. This is a tablecloth I made a few Christmases ago. I usually just get the bit of fabric that I've got, whichever colour I want, and then make it into a tablecloth to match my scheme. That's what I did that year. I think it'll work this year. So this is the incredibly messy and slightly horrifying, amazing cabinet where I keep the porcelain. I love these because the gold in the leaves feels quite Christmassy. Just checking which way up they go. I don't suppose it matters too much, but I get obsessive about things like that. I'm a bit stressed because I have just been looking up getting more of these plates. They were designed by the famous florist Christian Tortu for Renault, which is one of the Limoges porcelain manufacturers and apparently they were discontinued last year. I've had these for years, but I've been adding to the collection bit by bit each year. So this might be a 12 person set forever more now. And as there's usually more than 12 of us, I can't use them that often. And now for the new plates, the Philippe de Zoulier also discontinued plates that I bought for Christmas this year. Yes, see, suddenly it becomes Christmas on the plate. These plates represent the five senses. So here there's sight. The unicorn in the main tapestry is sitting next to her, looking at himself in her mirror. Now for my favorite cutlery. My father bought this gold plated cutlery for my mother one Christmas. I remember her opening it and just looking at him and going, but why? <laughs> and I immediately knew that I would be able to show her why if she didn't want to use it, I would. <laughs> And I've been using it ever since. So Christmas is a perfect day for it to come out. Okay, the cutlery is coming on very oh, nicely. Yes. It looks pretty, it's coming along. It does, it's starting to look pretty, but okay, this is, this is not enough. We need more. Do you think we need three glasses per person? Or do we need four as it's Christmas day? <laughs> if I were going with our theme of more is more, I think four. Now, uh, why was I even questioning it? I'm not sure. Okay. Oh, oh, the wait. magical cupboard. Yes. Okay, so then we have three. And then maybe a green one just for the hell of it. For the water. Perfect. I have a book. L'art de dresser la table. The Art of Laying the Table. It's by Christophe Lehoux, one of the best cutlery manufacturers in France. And look at this page. How to lay the table in France, in England and in America. So let's have a look and see how it looks with the glasses, because that's what we're trying to decide. So in France, they go in a straight line 
going down in size, which is champagne, water, red wine, white wine. I mean, we're heathens, so we're going to use a big one for the red wine, and we'll probably use a little one for the water, but that doesn't really matter. The idea is that it goes down in size. Okay, now we've tried the English way. Now, remember, this is a booklet from the 1930s, so things may have changed in polite circles, but we're using this book to decide which we want. This is the English way. Water, red wine, white wine with champagne at the back. That's the only difference. There's something absolutely hilarious about the American way, I'm afraid, Ashley. We could always lay your table like this, just your place setting. <laughs> the American way has <laughs> them going down in size like this in a little arc, but note, no champagne for the Americans. We've changed everything. We have made our own configuration. It's a sort of Anglo-American fusion. We've done the American little horseshoe shape and we've added the champagne flute where the British would have it. It's a beautiful thing. It's a meeting Anglo-American table in France with French porcelain. So I feel like we've covered all our bases right now. I'll admit I'm getting a bit panicky because we haven't made any kind of decoration in the center. Don't worry, I want it. Yeah, but there's no space left because Ash and I have thrown all the glasses at the table. We're putting the little hearts up and the one over there is missing its sparkly part in the middle, but I think that looks better in the dining room without it. So I'm just gonna pull the hearts out. Just pull the hearts right out, like they were never there. That's much more stylish. Right. Just trying to fit the entire garland and the lights in the middle of, quite precariously in the middle of the table. I'm panicking a lot less now. The table was looking quite bare and elegant in a way that I didn't like at all for Christmas. So we're just cramming everything that we can possibly cram onto the table. I'm adding all the little birds because it's my take on a mille fleur background, which is what they have in many Renaissance tapestries. It's just a dark background with lots of individual flowers in the darkness. And this is our take on it, but with birds instead of flowers. I think it's starting to look good. I do think Christmas mouse should be with us on Christmas day. But Michael, can you find the tall, thin candles? Because we need lots of them. Yes, I can. Awesome. Meanwhile, oh, you might not want to leave just yet because, you know, Ashley accidentally wine. opened a sweet wine. Yes, I did. How is the sweet wine going, Ashley? It's not very good. It's very sweet. <laughs> but Donna suggested we just needed to eat more blue cheese mm. to make the, the wine. wine work. That's the sort of thinking outside the box Try that we love. Oh, ah, and here is some blue cheese. Ah. I love problems that are solved by the addition of blue cheese. That's a good problem. Mm. That looks awesome. It does. It kind of disappears a bit though. So you're saying it doesn't look awesome. I think she looks great. I am randomly sprinkling little bits of potpourri around the table because I found this old potpourri that presumably belonged to my mother and it's all red and green so it's perfect colours and it will fill the little gaps around the table. And Michael, what's well, your project over there? I'm, I'm left looking after the safety candles. I guess I can't be trusted. <laughs> it's very precarious. <laughs> oh my god. What is it? No, I can't. I, I'm sorry, I'm speechless, but... Well, you can see they're missing a little piece here and here. And we have all of them, except for one. And that's why they're not on anymore. And these are really beautiful antique candelabras. How long ago did it go missing? Six years. It went missing six years ago. I remember the night it went missing. It was right about this time. It got knocked off the table and no one could find this piece. And it was in a bag of potpourri that I haven't touched in years that I'm suddenly randomly using for a table. It's a Christmas miracle! Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas! What are you working on, Donna? Um, I haven't studied origami, but I'm trying to invent a brand new folding system <laughs> <laughs> for our napkins. Yes. I made these last year as our Christmas napkins. Concetia. Awesome. You have studied origami. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's really Christmas dream team over there. I'm trying to find if there's a plug over here. Ah, plug's on the other side. Yeah, but we need another there one. There isn't one here. You'll have to use a multi-plug. Okay. Michael loves looking for multi-plugs. Multi-plug? 
the exciting bit. This year's Christmas crackers are going on. They look so pretty. Michael did such an amazing job with these. Very important. A lot of people don't like Brussels sprouts and in England you're certainly not allowed to have Christmas lunch without them. So I found chocolate Brussels sprouts and there will be one on every plate. Then no one has an excuse. They have to eat their Brussels sprout. When I went to see the tapestries in Paris, I got a little postcard and I'm going to use this as the menu card on Christmas day. So I'll just write the menu on the back. But it looks really pretty there. Staying out the way of the vlogging. You look <laughs> adorable. Why would this adorable creature want to be out of the vlog? <laughs> There's nothing to see here. Very importantly, we mustn't forget our gold, frankincense and myrrh candles that I made with Michael Petherick. Now, usually I wouldn't light any of the candles until Christmas day, but I want you all to be able to see what it's going to be like on Christmas day. So we'll quickly light the candles and then blow them out. <laughs> That's the last thing for the table. That's the last one. Well done. You like it? Beautiful. You two are the dream team. Candle dream team. I can't talk and do candles at the same time. Okay, sorry. Okay, what now? Oh, it's magnificent. That is magnificent. <gasps> it's so beautiful. So here we are. The finished medieval themed room, all ready for Christmas dinner. Do you like it? Yeah, this is fantastic. Do you finally like her there now for Christmas? In the low light, it looks really good. Right, she, she's like standing out now. So your mum did the tapestry? Yes. Oh, incredible. She looks beautiful. It's magical. It's Christmas. It's perfect. Yeah. And I didn't show you yesterday because I didn't want to spoil the surprise until we'd done the medieval theme. Two <gasps> new ornaments for the tree. Oh, wow. The lady and the unicorn. Oh, those are gorgeous. We need to go and put these on the tree. Do you want to hang the lady or the unicorn? The lady. Okay. Unicorn. We did not leave a lot of space on here. No. Oh, got one, got one. Yeah, put her right in the front because she's the, um, the theme for this Christmas. Yes. There we go. There they are. And the unicorn's on the right side. I like how we all have a Brussels sprout. I thought you'd like that. Good job, everyone. Well yes. done. Merry Christmas. It's a Merry Christmas. I can't wait for Christmas Day. It's white outside And the night is cold Everyone's lighting candles in their home Christmas It's a magic time You can feel it in the air That every child Got their hearts filled up With joy Yes, it's Christmas